VPNs are everywhere. Every other tech video is shouting about how you need one, whether it's for privacy, security, or streaming. The industry is flooded with marketing hype, half-truths, and flat-out misinformation. And most of the VPN videos you've seen have been sponsored. And the producers are gagged and give you filtered information. Well, not this one. This video is not sponsored by any VPN company. I'm not including affiliate links, coupon codes, or pushing you towards any specific bias. This means I can freely answer the question most of your top influencers on YouTube will not. Should you really trust VPNs? In the next few minutes, I'm going to break down exactly how VPNs work, what they can and can't do, which companies are hiding shady secrets, and how to actually stay safe online without falling for scare tactics. If you appreciate brutally honest, hype-free content, do me a favor, like this video, share it with someone who needs it, and subscribe if this is your first time on the channel. That's exactly how we keep the truth louder than the marketing noise. So let's get started. What does a VPN do and what doesn't it do? Think of the internet like a giant airport. Every site you visit is a flight you're trying to catch. Normally, your ISP, that's your internet service provider, is the TSA. They see who you are, where you're going, and they log it forever. In the early 2000s, they could see everything. Your emails, your passwords, your credit card numbers. That's because the internet used to be mostly unencrypted. Websites were using HTTP. Then came the upgrade HTTPS. You know that S stands for some sort of encryption, the little lock icon you see on your browser. It encrypts your connections to websites. So today, whether you're banking or simply watching YouTube, HTTPS already protects your data from prying eyes, even on a public Wi-Fi. So where does a VPN come in? A VPN creates an encrypted tunnel between your device and a VPN server somewhere else in the world. You know, maybe Japan, Switzerland, it could be anywhere. To the sites you visit, it looks like you're probably maybe in Tokyo. And then to your ISP, it looks like you're connecting to somewhere, but they can't tell what you're doing. Now, this is useful for bypassing censorship. So think of a journalist or a user in Iran or China. You might also use it to beat geoblocks. So if you're streaming shows only available in the UK, a VPN comes in handy. And then also it could be an added source of privacy when your ISP is logging your activity. But if you've seen a lot of these VPN videos on YouTube, there is a truth they wouldn't tell you about. Once your traffic enters the VPN tunnel, your trust shifts from the ISP to the VPN provider. And not all VPNs are worthy of that trust. Now hold these thoughts for a second while I answer another question. Why are VPNs pushed so hard? To get the context, let's talk business. The VPN industry was worth over 45 billion in 2022, and it's projected to skyrocket to 350 billion in 2030. Once there's a lot of money to be made, privacy is usually the last thing on an investor's mind. And VPN providers have figured out something quite early. Scare people enough about hackers, Wi-Fi threats and government spying, and you've got yourself a subscription model. Let's look at the top YouTube videos on VPNs. In fact, I'll do a YouTube search for top VPNs. Now, let's go through this list. The top VPN content producers are, we have VPN Pro, more VPN Pro, you know, we have Cyber News and more of Cyber News. Almost all of them push NordVPN, Softshark, ExpressVPN, and CyberGhost. I'll show you this later. And I especially love this one that says, Honest Opinion. So let's dig a little bit deeper. As I open the description, we scroll down and we have a disclaimer. VPN Pro is owned by MediaTek, whose investors are the founders of Nord Security, whose products and services we may review. Well, let's explore cyber news. Um, it has its own disclaimer that says, cyber news is owned by MediaTek, whose investors are the founders of Not, v Not Security, sorry, whose products and services we may review. 
The funny thing is, once we put a disclaimer on something, it feels like we are being honest. But in reality, this is just a psychological play. So here, the VPN founder does a top VPN review. Of course, includes their own product and tells you this is an honest review. Funny, right? Now, what VPNs are they pushing? Let's find out. As you can see, almost all of them are pushing NordVPN, Softshark, ExpressVPN, and CyberGhost. And here is even where it gets worse. NordVPN and Softshark have the same parent company, Nord Security. It merged with Softshark in early 2022. You see, when two of the biggest competing VPNs are owned by the same company, it shatters the illusion of choice and raises serious doubts about who is really protecting your privacy. CyberGhost and ExpressVPN are also connected via investments and mergers. They both were acquired by Cape Technologies. It centralizes control of several independent VPN brands under a single company with a questionable reputation. I will explain this in a moment. So you see, most of the VPN videos you watch are not a comparison, but actually a product carousel. So the next time you see honest VPN comparison, check who is behind the curtain. Now let's explore the dark side of VPNs and here is where things get really shady. Have you heard of the name Cape Technologies? Well, they own ExpressVPN, CyberGhost, and Private Internet Access. Before rebranding, they were Crossrider, a company that was tied to browser hijackers and adware. Now you see, they've spent years trying to rewrite their history, but as a researcher who tracked their early software, I remember everything. So here's the question. Would you trust your online privacy to a former adware company? Next is Hotspot Shield. In 2017, they were reported to the FTC, that's the Federal Trade Commission in the US, for logging data and redirecting traffic for ads despite a no logs promise. In fact, they later admitted that they monetize free users via third party partners. The list goes on. We have this free one called BetterNet. It was found in some academic studies to include four, more than 14 tracking libraries in its app. It was also flagged for malware activity, and it's still one of the top free VPNs to use on mobile apps. In fact, at a time, Facebook also had a VPN called Onavo. This one was straight up spyware. It was marketed as a privacy tool, but actually monitored everything you did and fed the data straight to Facebook headquarters. In fact, teens were even paid gift cards to install it. Apple banned it, Google banned it, but it proves a point. If a company can make money mining your traffic, they will. Now, even NordVPN that is widely respected suffered a breach in 2018. A third party server was compromised, not disclosed it late after researchers brought it to light. And here is the small print that most people do not read. If a government knocks on their door with the right papers, many VPNs will comply. Some are even obligated to log after receiving a legal order even if they previously didn't. So, can you trust any VPN? Well, before I give you an answer to this, remember to hit the like button and share this video. I'm not sponsored, but this video going viral means I get some extra bucks to keep bringing you unfiltered content like this. Back to the question. If you have followed this video so far, the handwriting should be on the wall. I will not trust 99% of the VPNs most of you use, especially the ones advertised by your top influencers. The short answer, you can trust a VPN about as much as you trust its leadership, legal jurisdiction, and transparency. Here is my personal short list and emphasis on short. First is Proton VPN. It's based in Switzerland and they have strong privacy laws. Also, it's open source, independently audited. It has no shady parent companies and it accepts crypto and cash for payments and subscriptions. Their free tier is probably the only free VPN I will recommend. And I've used this one while traveling with no issues. But even Proton has legal obligations. If Swiss authorities request data and Proton has something, yes, they will hand it over. The key is this, 
They've architected their system to avoid having anything to hand over. Now, there are other decent options. One I love a lot is Movad VPN. It's based in Sweden. No emails are required and you can have anonymous payments. Then also, I like iVPN. This one is Gibraltar based. It's transparent and it has strong policies. But I think the biggest question we need to answer is, do you even need a VPN? And this might be the part that VPN marketers will hit me for. If you're just browsing the web, HTTPS already protects your traffic. It's more likely you get tracked through your Google accounts, social media apps, smart home devices, and free mobile apps that are bleeding your data. A VPN will not fix any of these. But here's what it can do. It helps you assess restricted content. You probably will avoid ISP throttling in some cases, and you may hide your IP from sites that you visit. But here is what it does not do. It does not block tracking cookies. It will not magically encrypt your apps or fix bad habits. And it does not make you anonymous. Talking about anonymity, I will be releasing a video shortly where I compare Tor and Tails for only privacy and anonymity. You should look forward to seeing this one. It's going to be very interesting. Now remember, it even gets worse because if your VPN is logging you, you are worse off than if you had none at all. So what's my recommendation? Well, I've tested VPNs for several years and here is what I'll leave you with. Avoid free VPNs. Probably accept Proton's free tier and Movad trial. Ignore the influencer hype. Most reviews are simply ads. Read the privacy policy and the jurisdiction it's under. Only use open source and audited providers. And lastly, don't treat a VPN like a magic privacy wand. It's just a tool. Now, if privacy really matters with you, Start with a privacy-focused browser. I've done a tier list on this, so you should check it out. Also, use tracker blockers. So probably you block origin and privacy badger. And lastly, simply implement better habits. Turn off location sharing and audit your app permissions. The thing is, VPNs can help, but only if you know what you're using them for. In this video, I've given you a clearer picture of what VPNs really are. So please tap that like button, share this video, and if this is your first time, please subscribe. That's how you keep me producing more brutally honest content about tech. Also in the comments, let me know, have you used a VPN? Did you feel safer using one? Till the next one, stay safe out there, stay private, and I'll see you later.